I've been using the S6 and the S6 Edge for a while now and I found myself using a few accessories with it. So today in this video, let me talk about the accessories that I use and why I use them. A little disclaimer here, I'm not going to be really mentioning prices since accessory prices change all the time, but I will be leaving links to where you can get each accessory in the description down below. So do check that out for the current prices. That being said, let's get to the accessories. I'm missing something. Oh yeah, if this is your first time here or in case you just can't remember, my name's Ash and this is C4E Tech. Let's get started. First off, let's start with the cases. I generally feel there are two types of cases. Ones that provide great protection but at a cost and the cost being ergonomics and ones that look great offer decent protection but better ergonomics. For the former, I used to use the AutoBox cases, but these days I find myself using UAG instead. UAG cases provide similar levels of protection, but are lighter and more wieldy than the AutoBox. They aren't an eyesore either, and with the transparent backs, they still let the design of the phone shine through to an extent. I mostly use these if I leave the city on a trip. For the latter, I use oblique cases. They offer basic protection from dings and scratches, kinda puts my mind to ease so that I don't have to constantly watch where I place my phone. Oblique has quite a selection for both the S6 and the S6 Edge. I like the Naked Shield in particular, again since it's transparent and doesn't cover up the design of the phone. I've also been thinking of checking out the brand skins. Marcus Brownlee seems quite impressed with them. I haven't had a chance to order, the, order one for myself yet, but they do look cool and I'll be trying them out soon. I'll tweet out pictures and my thoughts on it when I do. At C4E Tech on Twitter, follow me if you don't already. Anyway, next up, let's get to the screen protectors. I used to use tempered glass with all my phones, but since the Note 4, I haven't really done that. The reason? 2.5D glass on the S6 or the Note 4 and the curved display on the S6 Edge mean that tempered glass or any screen protector for that matter doesn't cover the display entirely. That doesn't look great and Gorilla Glass 4 is decent enough to not pick up minor scratches. Hence, I've, cho um, I've decided not to use any screen protectors for the time being. But if you do insist on getting one, I'd recommend Spigen. Uh, they've been good to me in the past. I've used them. I use Spigen screen protectors with various devices and it's generally been good. Moving on, let's get to charging. Since both the S6 and the S6 Edge have support for wireless charging built in, I got myself a phone salesman Woodpuck wireless charger. Doesn't charge as fast as your regular charger, but I'm lazy and dropping my phone on it is something I like doing. Samsung also have their own wireless charger and I kind of like it a little bit more than the Woodpuck since it has this rubber over it and uh, gives a better grip for your phone, doesn't feel like the phone's about to slip, given the S6 and S6 Edge are generally pretty slippery devices. Anyway, if you do find both of these pricey, you could always go with the good old Nokia wireless charging pad. It's a tad slower but works great. I use the Nokia in the office and the Woodpuck at home. The Samsung one is a review unit that I'll have to return. Anyway, for charging on the go or power banks, again, uh, it varies depending on the scenario. If I'm say, say going on a trip with my friends or my wife in particular, you know, those kind of people who actually bug you to let you use your power bank once they say you see you having one. In those cases, I tend to go with the Xiaomi 16,000 mAh power bank. This can charge the S6 or S6 Edge about five times. It uses good quality batteries from major brands, LG in my case. The build is solid, supports pass-through charging and is quite fast as well. By the way, no matter what power bank you end up choosing, ensure that it supports pass-through charging. If you don't know what that is, pass-through charging is well. Uh, say you plug your power bank into the wall socket to charge it and at that point you also connect your phone to the power bank. Uh, the power bank passes the charge through as in before the power bank charges your phone gets charged first and once it's done then the power bank charges. So uh, basically you just need one socket to charge both devices and the one power bank that I do use that doesn't support pass through charging is the Keystone Plus again from Phone Salesman. Why I use this? is because it supports wireless charging and can receive power wirelessly as well. So I just drop it on the Woodpuck or my Nokia wireless charger and whether I'm watching TV or in bed, the socket by my bed is used for something else. So I leave my S6 Edge on this Keystone Plus uh, charger and it gets charged by the time I wake up. If you do want to charge faster, you can plug in a USB cable and use it just like any other power bank. You can also charge one device wirelessly while charging another with a cable. Keep in mind this is just a 4000 mAh power bank but 
That being said, it is quite light and ergonomic. Next up, let's move on to earphones. Sorry guys, I don't use any wired earphones. I mean, I do use my ATH M50X from time to time, but it is bulky and I wouldn't really recommend it, uh, you know, if you're on the move and just as an exclusive earphones, I mean, headphones for your phone, I wouldn't recommend the ATH M50X. So what I did was I reached out to Ranjit for recommendation and he loves the RH8 10i. He swears by it. So I guess, you know, Ranjit is a guy you can trust. So I'd say, uh, RH8 10 i should be my pick for earphones, though I don't actually use one. Why do I not use one? Because when I'm on the move, I'm almost always with my Jaybird Bluebuds X. These are Bluetooth earphones and they are great, very comfortable and I've had them for almost two years now. Uh, the battery life is still amazing. It was about eight hours when I tested it initially for music playback. I haven't performed a specific battery test yet, but it still holds up quite well. The audio quality is good too. In general, uh, one downside with the Bluebuds X is that, you know, you need to use ear fins or ear hooks. In general, I just don't like that. So a while back, I was checking for alternatives and I came across this. Extremely expensive earbuds. I was really curious on why someone would spend so much on earbuds. So just as out of that curiosity, I ordered them and man, these are fabulous. They fit great, see the seals great, and most importantly, I can work out a walk or even jog while wearing uh, my Bluebuds X without any ear hooks or ear fins. And that's how good the grip is. So if you can, do check out the Comply ear tips. And I really can't believe I'm saying this. These are worth the price. Enough. Anyway, moving on, let's talk about storage. Uh, for storage, I use this little Xiaomi OTG thumb drive. It works as both a regular, a regular thumb drive as well as an OTG drive. So if I will go on a trip, I just drag and drop all the media I want onto it and then plug it into my phone at a later time. But sadly, I don't think Xiaomi sells this. Uh, I got it as a gift at the Mi 4i launch event, but SanDisk does sell similar drives. Uh, but if you do already have a lot of thumb drives, you could just pick up a cheap ODG cable instead and plug them into it. So that's what I used to do before I got the Xiaomi thumb drive anyway. And anyway, talking about media, I'm sure you guys have seen these stands I use in various videos. They're cheap, have angle adjustments and uh, worth the price. So if you want to consume media on the move, want, want something to prop your phone up against, uh, I'd recommend them. And on a totally unrelated note, you guys have been asking me where I get my t-shirts from. I get them from Amazon. Again, I'll leave links to that in the description as well. Uh, lastly, I'm sure I'm going to get this question, smart watches. Guys, I still am not entirely sold on Android Wear. I did use a LG G watch for a while and there are newer devices that look much better, but the software is still essentially the same. And I don't find the software compelling. I don't find any deal breakers with regards to functionality that, that it brings to the table. So I'm still sticking to my Fitbit charge. The charge is awesome, by the way. Uh, it's helped me lose a ton of weight. Uh, it displays my caller note. I mean, uh, the caller ID when I get a call. I'm happy using it. Seven days of charge. It's great. If you're looking for a fitness tracker that's a little cheaper, the Mi Band is definitely one worth looking into. So I guess that's it for the accessories I use with my S6 and S6 Edge. Like I mentioned earlier, the links to all these can be found in the description. I'll, I'll be leaving links to both links for both the for both my international and Indian viewers. There might be some cases where you'll you'll find only a single international link since there might not be any Indian reseller for that product. And in those cases, I know you guys are going to be asking me about custom charges. So the short version custom charges cannot be predicted. The long version. I'll leave a link to this video where I explain how it works. So I guess that's it for now. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Vote it down if you didn't. If you have any constructive criticism to offer, do let me know in the comments below. Feedback's always welcome. And if you haven't subscribed already, please do. So I guess that's it. Thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, this is Ash here from C4E Tech signing off. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye now.